in the last session we just had a look at um you know this this first really stupidly simple trading strategy and we ended up basically building a loop and then we have a condition for for entering at a certain price for the stock and then exiting at a different price and we can already see a problem here which basically creates a doom loop so we said we enter at over $100 and we exit over $110 but what's funny is that if any price is over $110 it enters again if in cost is equals to zero and then exits uh, straight away if the price is still over $110 and so you can see here, yeah, it makes some money, but it also loses a lot of money. But it does all these crazy trades, which we really didn't expect, right? Because all we wanted is just entry over 110 and exit, uh, you know, exit uh, below. So what can we do? It's an interesting, interesting question, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, one thing is we can actually change the loop. And this will probably go back to uh, a little bit more what you know from your good old um, C++. So rather than using AAPL close, what we can do is we can actually say range length AAPL close. And so what range does is basically gives us a range of numbers. So I can show you perhaps here range let's say range 10 when we run it oh we have to actually wrap it into a list so this is this is basically one of these iterator things mm -hmm. and so it just gives us a list from zero to nine yeah just uh, 10 values for, and and remember python always starts from zero so when we have range 10 it goes from zero to nine something to really drill in uh, with mm -hmm. python uh, because that can be quite dangerous. So what we do here is basically, instead of going through uh, just the close prices, we go through the indices. There's actually another way to do this as well. Um, so we could use range length, but we could also use something else in Python called enumerate. Mm -hmm. And enumerate is very much the same thing, only that it not only gives us uh, the index, uh, that we get from range length, but it also gives us uh, the actual uh, iterator here. So we could do i comma price, and then it's like AAPL close, right? So we get an index and we get this uh, price. So the first thing we could do is instead of um, using i, we could just change all of this to price. And that will give us effectively the same result as before. Um, here, price, and here as well. And so if we run this, we're basically getting the same result. But what we can do now with the iterator is we can actually get also prices that aren't exactly in that loop. So for example, <laughs> one of the things we can do is, so so. One of the issues that we identified is this condition here was just not accurate enough because just saying, oh, if the price is over 100, there could be a lot of prices over 100. But what is the actual accurate definition that we should use? What do you think? Have a thought. Hmm. It's mean, it a little to... bit tricky. Yeah, it has to be something dynamically that is adjusting because... When you're saying 100, it could be also just 200 or 1,000 or whatever. Yeah. But so one it will of the only things close. we could do is uh -huh. if the previous price is below 100 and the uh -huh. current price is above, then we get in. Yeah. So basically, only when we have this transition uh, between them, we're actually entering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so that is a much more accurate statement. So now we can say well. And now what we need to do is basically we need to use this ILOG thing again. AAPL dot close dot ILOG. And then we go I minus one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is less than 100. And 
price is larger than 100. What we could do here, of course, is instead of price, we could also use aapl.close.ilog of i, yeah? Mm -hmm. So if i minus one is below 100 and i is above 100, we exit. Mm -hmm. Cool, isn't it? We could also be a bit more accurate, perhaps, if we wanted to, uh, if we say larger or equal to 100, because there could be a case, if it's equal to 100, we, we actually go to basically from, from below 100 to 100. And so then that, uh, that function doesn't actually trigger. And then if we go higher, it doesn't trigger as well. So we want it to trigger regardless. And mm -hmm. that's, how we, that's how we do it. So if we don't use this equal sign, there could technically be a case uh, where this is not happening. Now you can see already uh, when we build trading strategies, we ha and this is like really the simplest uh, you can imagine, we have to be extremely diligent and be really careful how we do this. Because if, if it's not perfectly spot on, mm -hmm. there's all these edge cases that can really kill us. Uh, and obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll lose a lot of money if we don't do this correctly. So how do we do the exit? What do you think? Obviously, price over Higher. 110. Is that enough? Mm, no, I don't think so. Well, actually, if you think about it, really, it should be enough. Because we're only entering at a certain point, right? Mm -hmm. And if we haven't entered, we can't exit. So, so the exit will actually happen above one hundred ten, yeah. But then, there's gonna there's only gonna be another entry when we have this. So actually, this is enough for the exit. Interesting, isn't it? Like, mm -hmm. it's such a simple thing, but when you when you go down to the details, it's already a, a little bit tricky, and we have to be extremely aware of of these things because. You know, imagine you are someone who trades an aut automated trading strategy and you want to trade uh, a billion dollars through that or a hundred million dollars, let's say, whatever. <laughs> that that could be really, really dangerous. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, we got to be super, super careful how we do this. Now, um, let's just test whether that's actually true, whether, whether, um, so we shouldn't see a lot of entries and exits. We should see some because it, we know it goes over 100 and it goes over 110. Maybe we should only see one or maybe even two. We don't know, but let's just check this out. Okay, so we see one entry, one exit, okay? And we made a profit of, and actually it's interesting. Look, the entry we said it should be above 100. It's mm -hmm. 106, so there's quite a big gap, you know? It doesn't go through smoothly. It actually jumps quite significantly. And then you can see here, it exits just over 110 at a profit of $3.8. Uh, 